Good evening, and welcome back to the Pipe and Tobacco Talk podcast. It's episode 43, and Tim, it's time for you to read the mbsdpipes.com Prop 69 warning. It would be my pleasure. Warning, everyone, this podcast will expose the listener to offensive, insensitive, off-putting, and otherwise culturally unacceptable content known to the state of California to cause throat cancer. To avoid injury, the sponsors of this podcast suggest you grow a pair. Yeah, there Look. we go, Tim. That away. Los huevos. Los huevos. Yeah. And we'll start the episode off with a big fat lie. Uh, Mike could not join us this week for the episode. He has family in town. It was Father's Day Sunday. We're recording on Tuesday night. Uh, this will probably post on Thursday-ish. You know, we're, you know, yeah. you know goals, yeah. you know, schedules. Not, not really our thing. I, I know. You know. I know. We, we try yeah, to do a weekly. can on this. Okay. You know? So, Tim, we have successfully avoided this for two episodes. We need to give away this lovely Rhodesian myrrh from MBSD Pipes, and we have to have a contest. Right. Gorgeous pipe, oh. brand new, looks spectacular. It's a myrrh. Can't beat a good, can't beat a good myrrh. So how do we want to give this away, Tim? I, I think we have a make us laugh contest. Right, I know. Uh, you know. That's what I was thinking we were going to do, is have a make us laugh contest. All right, so um, on... So it's Tuesday. We'll post it tomorrow. Uh, make us laugh. I'll take some pictures. Don't care how you do it. Send us a meme. You know, because Tim and I are still cracking up about the, uh, you know, the yellow lead better and, uh, you know, the dildo know. of consequences. And I was just thinking about the yellow lead better today. Um, <laughs> who was some, oh, I know. Um, poor Mike Hillbold. He, he bought a, a couple of pipes for me, a commission and another one. And um, I sent him. And I didn't put the unit number on his um, on the address, so I got to go to the post office tomorrow and you know reroute it, get it sent back to me, so I can fix the address. Otherwise, it, it would get delivered somewhere around where he is, and who knows what'll happen. So anyway, oh. I was standing there and I'm thinking, how do I keep doing this, like fucking up these um, uh, these addresses? And I'm thinking, you know what? This thing keeps catching me on a carmine unaware. <laughs> Potato wave. <laughs> I, I, I was on a carmine unaware. <laughs> <laughs> it's just absolutely one of the funniest, you know, and uh, what was it, Terry, that, that sent us the, uh, what people think of uh, <laughs> red hot chili peppers, you know. <laughs> stepped on a buffalo <laughs> you know make us laugh that's the, the key to this show this is you know body humor that's what we do right um right you know there's there's nothing that that, that we like better than something that makes you just like pass out laughing yeah, so exactly take a swing take a swing that's right please that's right we're gonna so we're gonna give away a pipe Beautiful Rhodesian from MBST Pipes. We'll do that next week on the air. And I'll we'll post it. I'll post it. Send it to Tim. Copy MBST Pipes on it. They'll, they'll send it out. So, And, you know, you just got to love Mitchell and Sarah. So a little bit later in the episode, uh, Mitchell, my crack dealer. Hey, Jim, I've got uh, I got uh, two boxes of Grey Bows and K Woodies and some other stuff, and I'll cut you a deal if you buy 10 or 12 of them. You know, they, they all have to be. They all have to be now refurbished. You're, now you're buying pipes by the gross, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know it's going to be a rough day, you know. Boop, boop, boop. There's a truck backing up. Yeah, don't worry about it. Hey, it's up. nothing. It's nothing. And a guy with a, a guy with a pistol gets out, you know. <laughs> you know, there's some guy out there with, you know, the like, <laughs> Like you know, the gate agents has got the flashlight waving them back in. You know, ah, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you, so, uh, you you don't have a choice. You have to move. Yeah, you're out of space. Uh, you're out well, of space. Uh, that and I just can't. Uh, every day it's something newer and bizarre in Colorado, and it's just yeah. 
Yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving all yeah. year long, Clark. <laughs> we're we're cutting more police and fire services so that we can house the homeless. Yeah. Nice. Y- y'all think that's a good nice. idea? Because um, yeah, know, I'm, I'm I'm looking for a little more law and order. <laughs> I'm not looking for less law and order here. Yeah. <sighs> but anyway. Yeah. So Mike uh, will not be here to talk about his favorite tobaccos, but we're going to talk, we are going to talk extensively about tobacco today. Um, uh, And before we go any further, I I have purposely avoided any type of shilling. You know, I just don't want this to be a sham wow commercial for Emerson Southern Forge. You know, if I make something new, we'll talk about it. But I just, I, I never wanted it to be a commercial. I just wanted to talk about pipes and tobacco. And, and and because I do see, I'm, see, and, I'm the opposite. I I wanted I wanted this to just be a shameless ad <laughs> for Papa Bear's pipes. Constant, <laughs> constant. T- t- today's episode you know, of What's for no Sale? No shame, Papa, just <laughs> just <laughs> shilling <laughs> all the time, you know. But you know, wait, and just like beer. there's more. <laughs> right. Right. And then, you know, and then there's always a, a segment where I berate the audience for not buying more pipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I so w- it, it, there's a time and a place to, and I don't advertise, I don't, uh, you know, the highlight for me is when somebody comes and says, hey, I want you to make me a custom blend. Cool. Perfect. You know, that's great. You know, I, I, that's the niche I've been trying to fill. You know, I wanted to be like the corner tobacconist where you go in and say, Hey, whip me up something. Okay. Uh, That's just, you know, uh, what I'm trying to fill. And I don't want it to be a commercial, you know, so I, uh, you know, it's, I, I have very specific ideas about blending and, and how I like to blend and what I like to do. Which is why there was a great article on smokingpipes.com from Chuck Stanion, who's an outstanding writer. Uh, and he did an interview with uh, Jeremy Reeves, the head blender from CND. No surprise they're in the same building, um, you know, because Ladisi and Smoking Pipes and CND are all kind of, you know, that's, that's one big house. But it's a, yeah. <clears throat> regardless, it's a great article. And the article is called The Semantic Discord of tobacco classifications. And when I was starting off and looking at this, there, there really aren't, you know, what's an English blend? What's an aromatic? What's, you know, what's a Balkan blend? And it it really goes into it. And and Jeremy has, you know, some, some great thoughts on it. And uh, I'll post the link to the article, uh, you know, in the description of the podcast, when this post, if anybody wants to go read it, but it was interesting because I, I think all blenders have their beliefs about things. And, you know, I, right off the bat in this article, he starts talking about, you know, should English blends have Perique in them? And uh, as a fan of history, um, you know, the British Navy was kind of a big deal uh, for about. 400 years, roughly, give or take. <laughs> they were kind of a <laughs> you big know, deal. So, yeah, they were kind of a big deal. So, I mean, they had, uh, they just had territories all over the globe, you know, and, and I love the English saying, you know, the the beauty of our women and the the elegance of our cuisine made us the finest sailors in the world for 300 years. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Whenever I, I think know. of British women, I think of giant boobs and terrible teeth. <laughs> there you go. You know, I, you know, <laughs> I had to go to Wales uh, at least twice a year for six years, uh, my previous employer. And you go to breakfast, and it's like, oh, I'll have bacon and eggs. And you get bacon and eggs, and it comes with a giant portobello mushrooms and, like, baked beans. And I'm like. Um, excuse me. Um, 
you clean out the refrigerator? <laughs> what are you What are you doing? I mean, did, did you get a missed delivery or something? Oh no, this is this is a standard breakfast here. Like, oh okay. Well, I'm allergic to mushrooms, so take those away. And you know, I really don't want to start off my day with flatulence. I can create enough all on my own. I don't need baked beans right. to help. Right. Um. And it, you know, uh, when I, we were there, it's like, oh, let's let's have. Uh, you know what? What are some traditional English dishes? Oh, we have fish and chips. Okay, all right, yeah, and then we put malt vinegar on it. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Right. Um, right. All right. Um. Not. I'll have an iced tea. Would you like milk in that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like all all of their food looks like leftovers to me. <laughs> so, like she- shepherd's pie, we we went to this. Uh, it was a British, Irish, British pub. And there were a couple mm-hmm. of things on the menu. One was, uh, what's the thing where they take um, a, a cut of, uh, you know, your worst beef, stringiest, toughest beef, and then they roll it in a pastry and cook it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. In in America, called? they're called pot pies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right, you know, and, then, but, and then I said, "Well, maybe I'll have uh, I'll have shepherd's pie." So they bring it out, and it's like, "What the hell's this?" You know, it's le- it's leftovers. It's like, uh, you know, two day old stew <laughs> on the bottom of the dish, and then <laughs> yesterday's mashed potatoes on top of it. <laughs> yeah, you made it very. You know, isn't that lovely? And I'm like, no, it's not lovely. Yeah, it's, oh. you know, that'd be forty two dollars. <laughs> it's leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We cleaned out the fridge. I, you know, like if, if all there was, if, <laughs> if all there was to eat was that, I'd be like, "Buddy, come here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna love give this. To, yeah, give it to the dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you know, anyway. I had to go to the. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, should English? Okay, so for me, when I look at an English blend, there are two things that an English blend should have. One is Latakia, and the other is Oriental. Okay. And then whatever else you want to put in it, good to go. Um, uh, that's just how I look at it. Um, you know, when when I talk about, you know, the article is great because it goes in, you know, should Cavendish be in, in English blends? Well, yeah, they invented it. You know, what most people don't know the story of how Cavendish was invented the, the British trading ships would come over, load up with Virginia tobacco in it, put it in what's called a hogshead, which is basically an oak barrel, and put it in the hold of the ship and sail it back across the ocean. Now, for those of you that have never been on an older sailing vessel, uh, down in the hold of a ship, it gets very, very warm and very humid. Um, so, you know, the, the temperatures in the hold can be, you know, 140, 150 degrees. So over this 12 to 16 week voyage across the ocean, they got, you know, they put just leaf tobacco in and over the course of the next 16 weeks, they get over and it became Cavendish. And that's how it was originally made. Now, nobody's going to do that now. And now Cavendish is basically steamed or you can pressure cook it. There's a couple of different ways. But typically it's just you're applying temperature to it. And the higher the sugar content is in it, the, the darker it'll get. So probably should, the, uh, the the humidity and the dampness in the in the ship hole was the only thing that kept the uh, barrels of packed green you know green tobacco from catching fire because yeah, they're going to well, heat on their on their own right <laughs> yeah, that, that's without right. the help of yeah 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 you know deprive it of oxygen you know because they crammed it in tight and a hogshead will hold uh, I, I've had a couple of people tell me it'll hold between three hundred to four hundred pounds of tobacco. Okay, mm. so these are not tiny barrels. You know, they're not enormous, yeah. but they and, probably and they pressed may... it in too, right? Oh yeah, crammed as much of it yeah. in as they could. Okay, cool. So that's <laughs> Cavendish. All right, sure to be in an yeah. English blend. Well, yeah, why wouldn't it be? You know, they invented yeah. the stuff. Um, you know, that's how IPAs came about too. One of those uh, happy accidents. No, well, the uh, they they. In order to get to the, um, uh, you know, get to, they had to sail down around the uh, the Horn of Africa. You know, mm-hmm. there was no 
way across between the continents. Right. They had to go south around the Horn of Africa to go to, to India. And um, the beer would spoil. So they packed it with, um, with hops to preserve it. And um, that's why the, you know, the, the IPAs are real hoppy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's an India pale ale because that's how they, uh, they transported it, turned it into uh, India pale ale by shipping it south around the Horn of Africa and back up to North Mm -hmm. India, to the Bay of Bengal. Bengal. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, there you go. See, learning something new. There you go. See? You know, I, I like to leave the uh, the beer making to the Germans. I, I like some of their stuff, and I love Mexican beers. But you know, you know I, and I have a very strict rule about bill, beers. If you didn't make five hundred million barrels, um, I'm probably not having you. I am. I, I am a basic white boy. You know, light beer this from like uh, <laughs> Stroh's. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stroh's. Miller yep. Light. Yep, Miller Light. You know, Modelo, you know, you know, just basic. Old Milwaukee. Uh, ooh, That's uh, some uh, shit beer. <laughs> uh, uh, Goebel. Goebel that, is that, the one. That, <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. Man. When we were Man. in college, you could get a 30-pack of Goebel for five ninety nine, And we oh, drank yeah. a, lo- a lot of Goebel. But we called it Jebel yeah. to make it seem fancier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some show bell. Well, you know, they had this, uh, I don't know if you got it down South, um, when you were living there, you could 25, 30 years ago, but it was the K O H L E R Kohler beer, the Kohler caller. They had the, uh, uh, the big Magnum bottles of it and it was oh, cheap. Yeah. 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 Mm, no, no, you know, you know, uh, Blatz, you know. Blatz and Schlitz. Schlitz, old style. There's a reason know. why why Schlitz sounds the way it does. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. They're How you feeling? The Schlitz. <laughs> How you feeling? Oh man, I, I have feel like the... I, I know. If I went to the zoo right now, they'd throw me in the baboon cage. My ass yeah. is flaming red. <laughs> from... <laughs> well, the other one that's bad is Red Stripe. Oh, you ever have no. that? Oh yeah, no. That's oh, what the Jamaican. They the call Jamaican it that because beer. of what happens to your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was your weekend? I, I'm bleeding internally. You know, I had I, I had nine red stripes. I'd be fatal. <laughs> now I got one major red stripe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's some nasty Dude. ones out there. Oh yeah, you know, uh, 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 Drummond Brothers. Um, was brewed in Kentucky, and apparently it was made exclusively with old pond water, because there was not an episode of Drummond Brothers that didn't involve <laughs> praying for death. Like, oh, I got a buzz. I'm going to die. <laughs> I got a, and I got Giardia. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling? Congratulations. Oh, Doc, yeah, Doc says I have malaria. <laughs> Yeah, I've been. I, I went out on Friday night. It's now Thursday. I've been drinking Pepto Bismol, and all I've been doing is shit in pink water. <laughs> yep, nothing solid coming out of that end. Not at all. <laughs> Boy, that's good beer. <laughs> Liquid fire. Yep, that's us. You know, and old style. I well, anyway there are two... on on the. Go ahead. Finish it. <laughs> Uh, old style and whatever old style did to beer and whatever Budweiser does to beer, whatever's in it triggers a migraine. N- it never fails. I don't know what the, the chemical or what, the, you know, is it beechwood aging, whatever they do to it. I've never it's had a Budweiser. Pr- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh. have a beechwood plant out, you know, a tr- beechwood tree out in the parking lot of the plant. Yeah. We made it near There's beechwood. a Budweiser. There's a bu- <laughs> a town called Beechwood. There, there was a uh, uh, there down near Columbus, just north of Columbus. There's a, a Budweiser plant, and uh, you see the water truck going in the one end, and the beer truck coming out the other, <laughs> and it's the same truck. It, it, that's how it takes minutes. 
mere minutes to turn <laughs> that whole truck into beer. I don't know. It's just whatever chemical they add to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and I just, I, I can't drink, you know, Michelob. Oh, we're, we're going to drink upscale. You know, we got a, a $4 six pack, you know, and that, so that I'm, you know, so you know how long ago it was. Cause I don't think you can buy a six pack for under eight, nine, 10 bucks yes. now. Yeah. 10 bucks now. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Oh, we got a $4 six pack of Michelob. Oh, good. I want to lay in a dark room praying for death. That'll be fun. But back to our hams, <laughs> hams. Oh yeah. Remember? Oh yeah. Schmitz. And then, and then, and two board gold. Oh God. Remember that one? <laughs> oh God. That was such <laughs> terrible. That And then there was like old froth and slosh. Oh yeah, where they would have the fat ladies in bathing suits on the cans. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you that are under the age of forty are going to have to Google this stuff, but it's okay. And in 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 the the ladies on the cans, they would get better looking as you drank the beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, like that old saying. I never went to bed with an ugly woman. I woke up with a couple, but I've never went to. Yeah, old frothing's lost. Yeah, you're the guy. The guy that's like, uh, what'd you do last night? He goes, oh, man, I'm so embarrassed. He said, well, what happened? He goes, oh, he says, I drank like a 12-pack of two-board gold. He said, I was so sick and disoriented. When I got home, I blew chunks. And the guy goes, oh, that's too bad. I hate it when I get <laughs> sick. He goes, no, you don't understand. Chunks <laughs> is my dog. <laughs> okay, so that was wrong on a lot of levels. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you care if I eat crackers in bed? As long as the dog's name's not crackers, yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, this is starting off good. All right. Yeah. Well, we sort of, and you know, when I was on trips to Wales, you know, when you get beer, it's not cold. It's you know, room temperature beer. Right. Right. Oh. Okay. Um. Hi, American here. Can we can we go ahead and toss a couple of these in the freezer for me? Uh, you know, right. take them at out in about twenty. Chill minutes. the glass or something. You know, yes. <laughs> something warm, flat beer. Go get them, killer. All right. So anyway, back <laughs> right. to this great article that I really enjoyed. Um, so it talks about you know, you know the the different C and D blends that are considered English, and you know, and uh, you know, he's talking about start of the East Flake, which is you know, a, a heavy Latakia blend, um, you know, and, and according to the article, he says that it's, you know, like 50% Latakia, which is, you know, a, a pretty strong Latakia. So in, in the ESF world, I consider anything that has more than 35% Latakia a Balkan blend, because I traditionally think of Balkan blends as Latakia forward. Um, and then, right. Yeah, you know that's what I was. Th th that was where, you know, in my mind, categorizing. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, consider. Personally, I wouldn't consider a, a blend that has, you know, strong upfront Latakia to be an English blend. I would think of it more as a Balkan blend. Yeah, no, I I think in English blends. Latakia is a great condiment, you know, because you're trying to bring yeah. the Orientals and Virginias forward. And if you put Cavendish in it or you put something else in it, you know, you're, you're trying to, to have a very layered, nuanced blend, uh, which is why mm -hmm. I'm very fond of, of English blends. And yeah. when we get to our our top five blends, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about why I like what I like. And Tim will talk about why well, he likes what so, he likes. So where does... Uh, uh, Burley fit in there then, because that in in my mind, um, Burley would also be a component of a of a sort of a traditional English blend. Am I wrong with that? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, because when you look at when the Americas started really tobacco farming, you know, when when the 1600s are rolling around, you know, it was Virginias and Burleys is what they grew. Um, mm hmm. So would would Burley be? Uh, yeah, I have English blends. I make English blends with Burley in it, um, and yeah. I, I I like the taste of Burley. 
I also like the fact that Burley, because of its very low sugar content, burns cool. So if you have a strong Virginia blend and it's biting a little bit, you know, you're getting a little tongue bite because Virginias have mm-hmm. a very high sugar content, you know, a great way to cool them off is to add Burley to it, you know, and you add yeah. just enough Burley to, to cool it down, but not really to alter the flavor dramatically. And, you know, just depending on what type of burly you use, you know, whether it's a white or a dark or a red burly, you know, you can add, again, a nuance to the blend. So, yeah. Um, you know, for me, like I said, the, the two things that an English blend has to have is Orientals and Latakia. Yeah. Plus whatever else you want to put in it. And I'm good with it. I, I don't I don't really consider. So I make a blend called Dreek Kruv. Uh, that has bergamot, a bergamot flavoring topping on it. Okay. Well, according to this article, that would be more of a Scottish blend uh, because it's got a flavoring on it. But bergamot is what gives Earl Grey tea its signature flavor. And right. Earl Grey tea is not something Scottish. So, yeah. Hmm. The, the uh, um, you know, the, the article, the, the, uh, um, categorize Cavendishes as sort of like a separate, yeah, separate but, from English. And, and I don't. And um, well, I was just wondering, you know, like because we were talking about the, um, uh, the 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 process of converting Virginias into Cavendish, and. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you made a uh, a blend for me, the big jar that you sent me of a bunch of different Cavendishes. And then Iron Mike had that one that uh, mm-hmm. you made for him. Yeah, it was yeah. called Iron Mike. Yeah, yeah. Iron Mike's and, Cavendish uh, Navy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, that one's, I love that one, by the way. But so uh, what's the difference between those Cavendishes? Is it is it a... Um, um, is it the pr- the, the process? Is it um, the 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 red you know you got some red Virginias you got just different varieties of Virginias that give you the different Cavendishes obviously that would be one thing but is there something about the process that also makes it different a, a little bit so when you're talking about Cavendish any you can take any tobacco and make Cavendish out of it so I have a Burley Cavendish I have what's called a toasted Cavendish. I have Black Cavendish, which is a, a straight Virginia, and I have uh, Red Virginia Cavendish. I mean, could you make Oriental Cavendish? Yeah, you probably could. Um, so it's just steaming it, putting it under pressure and steaming it. It makes it yeah, a Cavendish. Basically. That makes it okay. a Cavendish. And so, you know, that's where you get the variance. And, you know, one of the things that... To make an effective Cavendish to really get that black color that you're looking for, they what they'll do is they'll case it with a sugar water. Mm. You know, because you're looking what what gives it that black color is once you steam sugar, it will turn black on the leaves. So there you go. Okay. Um, and then you know it goes into and and again there really aren't classifications. There's no there's nothing to describe. You know, well, here's what it has to be to be this, or, you know, this is what a Scottish blend is. You know, there's no rules or regulation. And I've got, I've got articles going back and blending stuff that go all the way back to the 1800s. And there's no really defined set of rules to explain how a tobacco falls into a category. Okay. Um... So th- th- I think it leaves it up to every individual blender to decide, okay, I think this is this, and I think this is this. And I, I, I agree with it. You know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it's like a, a band that starts playing music, and they do three albums, and all the music's different from album to album. How do you classify them? You know, you know when, when you talk about, especially rock music today, you know, there's there's pop rock and there's death metal and there's small grandchildren wandering around behind you, Tim, going into the prize closet. I know. I know it's <laughs> <going>. <laughs> you know, and 
He wanted he wanted to he wanted to spend the night because uh, Anita bought me a, a, a t shirt for uh, Father's Day. It's got mm-hmm. the picture of the dog on it, and it says, you know, it's supposed to be from Buddy. You know, thanks for being my, thanks for being my daddy. You know, and if mm-hmm. somebody else was, um, I'd bite him in the nuts and I'd come and find you. And he just thought mm-hmm. that that was hilarious, so he wants to wear that shirt to bed. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. All right. So, so anyway, the the uh, um, the English is then. Really, uh, Latakia, Cavendish, Burley, um, some Perique, any combinations of those, and it could be considered an English blend. I think but, so. But Latakia uh, forward. Um, it doesn't have to be Latakia no? forward. No. It, okay. But it does have to have Latakia, and it has to have Orianals. And, and the reason that I disagree with this is because – because the English basically invented Cavendish, why wouldn't that be in an English blend? Yeah, right. Okay. You would think so, it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it gets into aromatics. And, and this is where, and again, not being a show, I like tobacco for being tobacco. And when I discovered whole leaf, it really changed my opinion on a lot of things and the different flavor profiles you get from unaltered tobacco. Now I do, I case tobaccos some, yeah, I do been, been dabbling in that. Do I make aromatics? Absolutely. Um, you know, do I put gum Arabic, any blends? No. You know, am I adding vinegar as a preservative? No, but if I do, I'll tell you, I do. Um, I like tobacco for being tobacco. Um, And, you know, this article goes in, uh, you know, fairly in depth about, you know, how they're trying to change the mouthfeel or change this to give a a better smoking experience. And I. I, Well, it comes down to uh, look, and I don't I'm going to say this in um, uh, and I don't mean it in a disparaging way, but it, it can it can turn into gimmickry. Where uh, now I'm trying to uh, taste, you know, apple pie or peach pie or uh, rum or something. And it's sort of like, well, if you want to do that, go have a drink of rum. Yeah. You know, or go have a go have a slice of pie. Yeah. I, I, that's that's my thought on it. Because, you know, anytime I um, have a, you know, I guess this is kind of getting into aromatics a little bit. But um you know these tins you open them up and it's like whew man that really has a uh, a fragrance like uh smells like uh um you know cinnamon rolls or something like that you know mm-hmm. and uh and that's real that's well and good but you don't taste that when you uh when you smoke it and a lot of times if it's got that kind of stuff in it it's pretty sugary anyway or it's got the uh the, you know a lot of alcohol in it and it's just going to be your tongue is going to be on fire mm-hmm. so and that's not you know you can't make a generalization i know because there's some things are you know people say well help that you know that's not the case all the time it's never the case all the time but in my experience by and large that's what i find and and i guess what i'm saying in the long run is, is that um you know i i really agree with you on the notion that you like you know the tobacco for the tobacco the the character of the particular tobacco and how they blend together and you know the kind of the nuances that they pick up as they're blended in a certain way as opposed to let's take tobacco which um ought to be good on its own and then spray it with this shit and then let's see how that tastes well usually it doesn't taste very good not to me anyway um so, anyway uh, i'm a i'm uh, a curmudgeon in that way well uh, yeah i am too um I just, I, I mean, we've uh, we've mentioned this on on multiple episodes. Uh, glycopropyl alcohol affects me much more than other people, and I can, you know, I can pick up. There are some aromatics that I think would be really good, you know. And, and we talked last week. You know, Mike talked about Cult Blood Red Moon. Well, whatever yeah. the, the 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 cherry flavoring that they put on that, but it's just a tin of tongue bite for me, you know, and it's not. I don't know. It's okay. Lots of people like it, and I don't 
you know, I'm not arguing with you, but I, it's not one that that I'm ever going to pick up and smoke. And I'm I'm very particular about the 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 aromatics that I do smoke, you know. And and it, we I've talked about this before. Captain Black original, you know, I'll buy that and put it in a jar and let it sit for two years because I know, you know, that that chemical will lessen, and it, it's a very good tobacco. Once you know, but if you get a fresh tin of of Captain Black and it's a little goopy. You know, uh, here's my advice. Take it out, put it on your tobacco tray, let it sit for an hour, hour and a half, you know, and, and a lot mm-hmm. of that goopiness will, will dissipate and it's a much better smoke. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, you know, and, and that's uh, you, the struggle for me for aromatics is, is that because I don't like to smoke them, it, it's tough for me to make them because um, I just you know, I don't like them, you know. And yeah, it's, it's just, not your passion. It, yeah, it's not my like thing, it. so. Uh, you know, I send, yeah. uh, you know, like I send them off to Matt Stewart and I send them off to a couple other people to, you know, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And I've been working on a pair of aromatics for, for Tom and Nathan uh, over at uh, Pipe Whiskey and Tobacco, uh, the podcast. And uh, to be honest with you, it's been a struggle for me to get the sweetness for Tom. Nathan, I've got his blend dialed in and, and both of them, are, the next set of samples are going out to him uh, tomorrow morning, but it's difficult because, you know, to get overly sweet means you have to add, you know, a higher sugar content to it, you know, and if you don't have a good cadence, you know, the the higher the sugar content, the more chance you have of tongue bite. And then when you throw glycopopyl alcohol on it, because most of the flavorings, um, that are out there and available have a, a fairly good percentage of that, you know, it's just, it's just a pipe full of tongue bite for me. So I don't, uh, you know, I really try to, I I searched around and I found some flavorings that don't have a high glocal, you know, that, that alcohol content to it. And I'll tell you, if you like flavored tobaccos, um, I'd recommend, you know, you know, if you want to try flavoring it on your own, get a spray bottle and bitters you know, plum bitters, peach bitters, cherry bitters, um, because it's a different, um, it does have a little bit of glycopropyl, you know, it does have that glycol alcohol in it, but it's not as fierce and the flavoring adapts a little better. And that's why I came out with the, you know, the Southern States bitters blends, because I just like the flavor that bitters impart uh, versus just a straight, you know, here's, you know, apple flavoring. So, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. You know. And then and uh, he mentions in that article to the uh, autumn evening. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and again, you know, like I said, you can't make general statements, but um, in that vein uh, of aromatics, um, that's one that I have a jar of it. And uh, every once in a while, I'll, I'll have some of it. Now it's not. Mm-hmm. I don't. I won't have that much of it, um, and I usually won't finish the whole the whole pipe. But it's just something different now and again, and it's not so overbearing. And there is a there is a bit of sweetness that comes through on that, at least in the first third, first half yeah. of the the uh, the bowl. Um, mm-hmm. And so for that, um, I like it. And that that cult blood red moon. It's of the of the cherry ones out there that's the one that's probably the least um brutal you know because that Mm -hmm. cherry odor just gets on your hands and you know it it stinks the place up it's it's fierce just yeah fierce you know and you know i I talked about cherry ghosting pipes you know and and there are some cherry flavored runs out there that you know if you're going to smoke them, good for you. Uh, it, it, you know, doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. But I would tell you to dedicate a pipe to it. You know. Yeah, I agree. You know. Yeah. Hey, I'm an, I'm going to smoke. You know, and I'm typically not that way. I just grab a pipe. You know, but I'm pretty consistent when I smoke. Uh but and I have enough pipes where I can say, okay, I'm only going to smoke X out of this, but I typically never do. But I do have a couple of aromatic pipes, just because I don't want them to ghost. So. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, and then, you know, the, he talks about should Perique be in English blends? Yeah, I think it should, you know. 
Um, and, you know, one of the things that's interesting, too, is you, I don't know if anybody knows the story of how Navy blends came across. So as as the British were sailing around the globe to prevent their, their tobacco from spoiling, you know, from molding, from getting mildew on it, they would put rum in, you know, put literally just pour rum on their tobacco uh, to prevent it from molding. And and that's and I, I have to tell you I do love navy flick. That's yeah personal favorite. Yeah, that's it. Yep, you know. I do agree there. Yeah, yeah. The rum and then uh, the different the different cuts. You know where you got sort of a you know a finer cut and then you got a you know mm-hmm. go run through those. Okay, so there's if you're going to start blending at home, you can get. A 0.8 millimeter shredder, you can get a a one millimeter shredder, or you can get a rough cut shredder. Um, most of the tobacco you get from Sutliff, C and D, GLPs, is either one millimeter or rough cut. I have found that the 0.8 millimeter kind of changes the game. Uh, and almost everything that I shred at home, I do in the 0.8 millimeter. And the reason being is with that finer cut, it smokes a little bit differently and you get a way different blend when you, and when I say blend, I mean, when you're mixing it up, you know, the finer it is, the more chance you're going to have, um, you know, an, an equal distribution where you don't get like, oh, you know, here's a. A Virginia Perique blend, and right now I'm in the Virginia portion of it. You right, know, that, right. You get pockets, pockets yeah, of yeah, where flavor. And, that, yeah, that, you know, and it comes in and out, and that's fine. You know, I, I don't. I, I think that's one of the enjoyable things about pipe smoking is is that you pick up on those. You know, as it's coming through, like ah, but I like for it to be, um, a little more consistent from top to bottom of the bowl, and that point yeah. eight millimeter does and i really like the way it lights and it smokes and that's how i do it that's so. that's the what i like about it is the point the point eight uh it just it just lights and smokes so much better for me um and the other thing too is that it when you when you put it out to dry um it does dry a little quicker too oh, oh yeah it does and then yeah. you don't <clears throat> the other thing that i like too is that when you do put a topping or a casing on it it doesn't get quite as heavily infused. I, I you know, when I put a topping on something, I'm not trying to drown it. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm just trying to add a nuance to it. You know, when I'm casing something, it's not like okay, I've poured everything that I have into this bucket, and you know, it's sloshing around. I'm going to pull it out and then let it dry a little bit and then put it in the blend. No, it's very light, and that's why I use spray bottles when I put it on because I want an even, you know, I want it spread evenly on and, and I want to be able to control how much I'm putting on, you know, and, and not get that, you know, that goopy wet spot in a blend. You know what I mean? I want it to be more even. Right. So that, that's the advantages to point eight. Some people don't like point eight and I'm, you know, I'm good with that. You know, that's, you know, the, what I love about pipes and tobacco is there's something for everybody. It may not be for everybody, but there's something for everybody, you know. And yeah. you, you find out what you like, and you know, once you find what you like, buy a lot of it because you never know when it's going to go away. So right, right, yeah. Yep. So Let's see what else he had in this article. And it's interesting. He he talked about uh, you know he's kind of a purist and. You know, he he talks about his own, uh, you know, misclassifications, and because there's no hard and fast rules, I, I, okay. So, <clears throat> you and I call it different things, but is it good? Do you like it? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> What's in? You no. Know? Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> well, it's interesting too how, uh, you know, Balkans would are a, a subclass of of uh, English. I would suppose, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you've got, um, uh, you know, Latakia, um, 
Turkish or Oriental tobaccos mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. it to create, a, you know, what, what we all call a, a Balkan blend. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's really a sub. It's a subset of uh, English. Mm -hmm. If you think of it that way, yeah. I, you know, and again, I, you and I both have the same thought. You know, I, like I said, when I look at, you know, the first two blends that I ever made were Bryn Mawr and Lantrasant. And mm -hmm. one I consider a Balkan because it's got more than 30% Latakia. You know, they both have Orientals, they both have Burleys, both have a little bit of Virginia. Uh, Bryn Mawr has a little bit of Perique in it. Um, and, okay, so it's not, because there isn't a definition, it's tough. You know, it's like, okay, each blending house calls it this and that. And, you know, someday, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll write up a blend this. This is what I call a Balkan. You know, it, it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Latik, very Latakia forward. You know, Orientals in it. And, you know, people ask me, why do you use Perique so much? Okay. We talked about this before. When you use flu cured whole leaf tobacco, because they're more acidic, um, uh, uh, they're higher on the uh, in acidity than ever. And Perique is very alkaline. So it balances it out. Some people can get tongue bite from an off pH, um, you know, tobacco blend where it's a heavily acidic, it'll, it'll give you a little more tongue bite. And that's, you know, why some of the additives they put in to tobacco like gum Arabic and, and some of the other things is to bring the, to a more pH neutral level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I mm -hmm. like to take the, you know, the tobacco. Okay. So, um, Burley, slightly acidic. Um, Latakia, a little bit acidic. Perique, very alkaline. Flu cured Virginia is very acidic. Okay. So, you know, when I'm making a blend to compensate for that, you know, that that's how I alter it in my world. So, and I'm just a little guy who sits at home and does a podcast. So, well, the, uh, you know, the other, the other one that, uh, it, it, it's it's more a blend than a than a classification, and that's a, a vapor, mm -hmm. where you've yeah. got you know Virginia and and Preak, and the the reason for that blend is like you said uh, just now is to try to balance out that the acidity in the Virginia and bring it mm -hmm. down a little bit, yeah, no, yeah. with the by using the Preak. Yep, yep. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And I'll tell you, in in my line, vapors sell better than everything else, and it's not particularly close. You know, Port Port Marion, you know, um, some of the navies. Um, you know, Colwyn Bay Navy uh, has long been a great seller. Connemara has been a great seller. You know, well, and. You know, that's people, you know, especially now in the summer, people switch. And you and I are both of the camp. I smoke what I like. I got up this morning and headed out with, you know, Lantrasant in my pipe, you know, because mm -hmm. I just like Latakia and I don't, doesn't really bother me in the summertime. So, right, right. Yeah. You, know, you just get to that age where you just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. You know. <laughs> and, you know, the article goes on and, you know, it just, it's, you know, he talks about additives in tobacco and, and I am very anti additive. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to put a bunch of stuff in it to, I, I like tobacco. So I don't mm -hmm. want, I don't want a chemical bath. I don't want a bunch of stuff in it. I just want my tobacco to be tobacco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, you know, and, and, I, and I think too that, um, and this is just me guessing on this is that, you know, some of this stuff that it, it, casings and, and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. a lot of it probably dissipates over time, you know? So, you know, you put this stuff, put this stuff away and, you know, you sell it and, um, uh, some of that, some of that dissipates over time. Um, some of it doesn't. 
and you, you know, that's the part that like the stuff that dissipates over time. I don't mind that so much. It's the stuff that hangs around and it's like mm -hmm. radioactive for years. You open the thing up and it's like, man, that thing's still got a powerful um, aroma of, you know, whatever. And um, mm -hmm. that's the, the, you know, and you, you get it on your fingers and it's sticky. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, it just, it just leaves me wondering like, what the hell is all that? You know? And, uh, well, um, and it changes too, when you set it on fire. And mm -hmm. so, you know, <laughs> now you got, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're burned, it's, you know, loading up the inside of your pipe and it's, um, you know, well, you get the yeah, drift. yeah, exactly. And, you know, one of the things that when you, when you're doing it as a business, you know, when you're okay, I can buy chemical X and chemical Y. And I can spray it on 1.8 ounces of tobacco. And now magically, because the tobacco absorbs it and hold it, increases the weight. Now it's two ounces. Yeah. You know, or I can take 1.25 ounces, put it, put an adding and a topative on. Uh, and those things are infinitely cheaper than the actual tobacco itself. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. You know, that's, it's just business being business, you know, that's, right. you know, you know, we're going to do it because we want to do this and this. And it's, I had a conversation with someone that worked for one of the major houses and, and, you know, they're, you know, everybody's very secretive about their blends. Everybody's very, you know, I don't want to talk about this. And he was telling me, oh yeah, they just spray stuff down because it increases the weight. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, right. Is what it is. Yeah. You know, so uh, you get, you know, 10, 15 percent of the, your, uh, ten, your, your, the, the weight of the product you're buying is the chemical. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and that's why I try not to. I just I don't want to use them. So I don't. You right. know, like, yeah. You know, you, you take care of the tobacco, you keep it in a jar, you know, mold. I, I haven't had anything mold on me um, having it in a jar. So on to the next thing. But it was a great, you know, it's a really good article. And it's, uh, you know, one of the things that when you look at a tin of your favorite tobacco and people call me up and say, hey, I, I like to have uh, X, Y, Z. You know, I, I like this blend. Okay. And you look at the tin and they say, okay, it's got Latakia, Virginia's, uh, a mixture of Burley's and some Oriental. You know, it doesn't, they're very secretive about what, you know, the, the blending ingredients they put in it. Um, and that's fine. Um, according to, you know, what I've read and what I've studied, that whatever is the highest percentage should be the first ingredient listed. And right. I was watching a video uh, from Pear George at Mac Barron, and he was talking, you know, some of our blends have 16 to 18 different, in, you know, blending ingredients in it. Okay. So when I say Red Virginias, there might be nine different types of Red Virginias in it. Like, oh, okay. Um, cool. Um, you know, I, I tried to keep, keep my, you know, most of my blends between, you know, three and nine ingredients. Um, just because, you know, I, I, I don't do enough, you know, when you talk about putting nine ingredients in a two ounce mold, you know, you're talking about, okay, well, this has to be 0. 0.12 of an ounce. Oh, good. There we go. That'll be fun. I wonder you know, if that's, measure. um, you know, when, when they, they say they've got, you know, however many, you know, multiple time, multiple numbers of, of ingredients. Um, so let's say that, um, you know, if it's a function of space and I've got, you know, one container, if you will, that all the Virginia goes into that, all of it goes in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if one of the components of a blend is Virginia, fine, but it's got four or five different types of Virginia in that all in one, you know, it's sort of like a generic, it's just Virginia, but it's, you know, a variety. I don't you, think that that is You don't the think case. so? Well, because okay. Mac Barron, actually, Mac Barron has a YouTube channel and they show all the pallets of tobacco and they're all separated. There's not, you know, they mm. don't, you know, it's not like they have, you know, like, you know, like a shipping container and they fill it full of Virginia and hope for the best. Yeah. No, they, they separate them all and they're by. So 
here's a West African Virginia that we bought, and here's uh, a Kentucky Virginia that we bought, and here's a you know a, a South Carolina Virginia or a North Carolina Virginia. They're all separated out. They're not just Virginia. Um, and I think that that's more of a how do you keep the blend consistent year over year over year is that you have to make sure that you have enough product to keep making the blend. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that you're, you're buying that same field. You know, I think that's why McClellan's got out of the business because they couldn't source their Virginias anymore. And they were very particular about the Virginias that they used. And that's why you see a lot of these small batch releases that are coming out that have kind of taken, kind of taken over, you know, like uh, today I got half a dozen emails that pipe force uh, two is out. You know, and the reason that they're doing these small batches is that if they go to a buyer and say, well, I've only got 500 pounds of this particular tobacco, you know, I'm, here's the indigy, I have 500 pounds of it, great, we'll buy it. You know, or I have, you know, a thousand pounds of X or a thousand pounds of Y. So they know that they're not ever going to be able to put this in a running production line because they just can't get more of it. So they do a limited release. And yeah. sure, it makes it interesting. You know, the, the dilemma that I have is that, you know, if I have don't get a chance to have eight to ten bowls or something, uh, it's going to be rare that I'm going to put it in my cellar. You know, I'm not going to buy ten tens of something on a guess. Yeah. So, you know, sure. Right. I, right. I hope this is good, you know. So, but that's my personal, you know, Picadillo. My well, there was cork. a day that you, there was a day a long time ago that you did that, but you don't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, you've covered enough ground. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, Tim, you want to talk about your five favorite blends? Because we promised the, uh, we, we would talk about your five favorite blends. All right. Well, uh, the uh, does it have to be a blend? No. Okay. Well, so the uh, this is our first show, time. We can do whatever. <laughs> okay. So first up is a um, uh, the uh, Mac Barons, um, the Double H Latakia Flake. Oh yeah, yeah. I love mm, that stuff. Me love me love me some of that. <laughs> yep. yep, yep. It's in my top ten, not in my top five, but it's in my top ten. Yep. And then um, there's a uh, uh, C and D makes a uh, a black Cavendish that I like. Um, I believe it's got a, a red label on it. Um, can't remember what the name of it was specifically because I took it all out and put it in the jars. Okay. Right. Um, but it's a uh, it's a good black Cavendish. Right. And then um, in the uh, black Cavendish line again, you've got the um, uh, uh, Iron Mikes that you made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's Cavendish one of my Navy. faves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, the uh, um, p- uh, that uh, Palmetto Balkan, mm-hmm. I like that one. Yep. And um, the uh, you made a it just says it's just Balkan that you made mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you made me the uh, Beaumont Supreme that's got some. Uh, p- uh, Perique in it, and then the uh, they're just the Balkan. I think it has a little less Perique in it, perhaps. Mm, um, I I don't think the bulk the original Balkan that I made, and I'll pull up the list. And I apologize. Maybe I it, do not. Maybe it has none. But um, um, I actually um, am liking that better than the the Beaumont Supreme. Although that's good. And then the 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 last one, uh, I'll throw in a. Uh, and an aromatic, and that would be if there is an aromatic, it would be that uh, autumn evening. That would be the one that I would have. Okay, excellent. Um, so that I am not a complete shill, I have done this two ways. I've got my five favorite blends from readily available sources. You know, where you can pick them up anywhere. It's not, you know, they're, they're from C and D and 
Mac Baron, and then I'll I'll give you my five favorite from what I make. So there you go. So at n- number five, um, Carter Hall. I mm-hmm. have always loved. I, I fell in love with Carter Hall. I was at the uh, Ingalls grocery store in South Carolina in in 2020, and they had uh, tins of it for you know the big 14 ounce jug of it. And I thought, you know what? Okay, for 22 bucks, I'm going to take the gamble. I think they're 29 now for a 14 ounce, and absolutely fell in love with it, and just think it's a wonderful blend. Um, and then from Mac Baron. This is Plum Cake Navy Blend. I just really, really, really liked it. You can buy it in bulk. It's not a particularly expensive blend, but I I, I like Navy blends. You know, uh, Newminster's 400 Superior Navy, uh, Mac Barron's Navy Flake. Um, I, I think I have nine or ten different navies in there. I, I like Navy blends. So, there you go. All right. Uh, number three, Westminster from GLPs. Uh, this is the one we talked about this. I, I picked up a tin of it at the Tinderbox in Palm Springs and absolutely fell in love with it. I've kept it in my cellar at, at all times. I always have a jar of it. Um, and you can see I keep four ounces in a jar. I like to have, you know, I'm, when I go on a kick of something, I'm, I'm, I got four ounces of it. So, Absolutely love it. A fantastic English blend. Um, it's just spectacular. Absolutely love it. Uh, and then, now, this is Red Odessa. It is a bulk blend from C&D. The label says Odessa, but th- because they don't make a label for it, it's not available in tins, it's only in bulk, but it's Red Odessa from C&D. And I love it. Uh, it just absolutely a great um, it is uh, Orientals, Virginias, a little bit of Latakia. It is just an absolutely fantastic blend, and I love it to death. And then I've talked about this a lot, so this really doesn't need a lot of introduction. My favorite blend uh, is Savinelli's Ascenza Cipriata. I love Acadian Perique, and I purposely did not put things in my top five or my top ten that are no longer available. Acadian Perique, I absolutely love. Lafleur's Bluff from uh, um, Country Squire. Um, Those two just aren't available anymore. So there's no point in, you know, if somebody wants to say, oh, I want to try something that that Jim likes, which would be odd, but, you know, we'll go with it. Let me have that little fantasy for a moment. Um, You know, I wanted to get you in things that are readily available. So that's my top five in things from other people. Now, from my personal collection of stuff that I make, um, number five would be Kentucky Fall. Uh, and this is the, it's a burly forward blend with a black walnut bitters topping on it. And mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty mm-hmm. good. I've, I've had to make that one a couple of times. Um, and then Port Marion, which, you know, we talked about a vapor. And so the story behind Port Marion is, is that, this was the blend I tried to create. Well, Connemara was the first version. I thought, well, I can make my own vapor. That's going to be just as good as a Katie Brick. And the first one I made was Connemara. And it is absolutely nothing like a Katie and Brick. Uh, because it doesn't have, uh, Connemara doesn't have dark fired in it. And I whipped up another uh, vapor. And this one I put a little dark fired in it. And ooh, Port Marion is awfully, awfully good. Yeah, that's I, good. I like it. And that's the one it, that has a uh, a bourbon stave, chunk of a bourbon stave in it. Nope, that's Port Marnock has nope. the bourbon stave in it. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. So the difference between Port Marnock and Port Marion and why they both have port in their name is that what I did is I changed the percentages to add a little Latakia to Port Marnock and then put the bourbon barrel stave in it. And that's mm. pretty good. Okay. Um, okay. And then... Lantresant, which is one of the first two blends. In fact, this is from the second batch I ever made of it, and this is from 222. Uh, so it's, you know, two and a half years old, and you can see I am almost wiped it out. Um, but that's, you know, uh, uh, just 
one of those blends that was in my wheelhouse, you know, uh, and I smoke it a lot. Uh, number two, and which is odd. <clears throat> so here's an oddity. This is a relatively new blend. It's Palo Torcido. Um, and Palo Torcido and Kentucky Fall are both newer blends. Um, uh, but Palo Torcido, I just, mm, mm -mm. you know, I grab that one a lot. And I, you know, the nice thing is I have 200 pounds of tobacco here, so I can whip up a batch anytime I need it. But I like Palo Torcido. And then the, my favorite of all my blends is Bryn Mawr, which is from my Balkan line. And it's a, a heavier Latakia. And I like the Virginias that I used in it. And I just like everything about it. So those are my top five blends from other people and top five blends from ESF. So yeah, there you go. And I misspoke about that uh, one uh, uh, Cavendish blend. It wasn't a C and D. It was Savinelli. Savinelli okay. made it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Savindelli's Black Cavendish. Yep. 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 Um, you know, and there's a whole bunch of blend. It, it, so here's the hard thing about being a blender. I have not made a blend that I don't like. Um, there are some that I don't smoke um, as regularly. And aromatics is, you know, the aromatics I make, I don't typically smoke a lot of those just because that's not my thing. But you know, when I, if it doesn't get past me, it doesn't really get out to the public. Um, so if I don't like it, um, you know, it's an oddity, you know, cause I, I like what I make. So yeah, whatever, you know, and, and you get to where you're, um, running through these, uh, blends and it's like, Oh yeah, I like that one too. Oh, I like that one yeah. too. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, there are some blends that have a very special place because like Harrison Cellar, you know, that was one that, you know, I made yeah. for, for Harrison and I absolutely love that too. Um, That's a good one. You yep. know, Mountaineers Resolve that I made from Jeff uh, from West Virginia that I absolutely love. Um, Beans 316 blend, you know, the, the, the drunken Mountaineer, you know, and one of the interesting things about that article too, he talks about alcohol and how it doesn't really add flavor and, I wholeheartedly disagree with it because I think that when you put, you know, specific things on, like if you put a spiced rum on a blend or you put like that Pikesville rye, which to me, not drinkable, but man, it imparts a wonderful flavor on the tobacco. And I, I think that, you know, and he talks about the molecules being so small, it absorbs right into the leaf and, you know, it doesn't impart that much flavor. And I, I kind of disagree with that. I think that when you're using the right liquors, you know, the right bourbons, the right whiskeys, which is why, you know, almost everything that I do that's bourbon is Four Roses. Not because it's my favorite bourbon, because I absolutely love the way it flavors tobacco. You know? Yeah. Um, just me, you know. Uh, Scapa Flow, which was a blend I did for Kane, um, uh, that's another Navy blend. And, you know, the, you just start going through the list. And like, yeah, I really like that. I really like that. So, you know, it's hard to pick out five, you know, and I have 22 blends that I sell her, you know, so how do I narrow that down from the five? Okay. Well, I went back and checked my list and said, okay, this is what I smoke the most. So. What do, you, do you, what do you, do you like that one that you made? It's called the bag of dicks. Um, <laughs> Satchel of Richard. Satchel. <laughs> Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and that's another one, you know, Garrett from Smoke Snacks, um, who's got a great YouTube channel. I think they're on blend 78. Now they're doing 78, you know, they're doing 100, right. uh, uh, 100 blends in 100 days. Um, and I I like Satchel Richard. You know, that was a yeah. a great idea. And, and that's for me, the fun of the blending is the collaborating with somebody. And yeah. by the way. I got the gin and hang on, I'm going to grab it. I, I meant to set it up here. Hold on. All right. So my new friend from Tokyo sent me TL Pierce gin. This is 57% alcohol by volume and I cracked it open and I've had a couple of swigs of it and, and tasted it. And it is by far the best gin 
I've ever, uh, ever tasted, ever smelled. It is FM. It is just a magical gin. And I'm not a huge gin guy, um, but this is great. And I'm, I've designed two blends for them. And once I get done with Eric's uh, from EMC Custom Cobbs Big Order, uh, I'll, I'll put those two together. I've got the math done. I've got, you know, it's just a matter of, of, of putting it all together and, you know, firing away so at it. What, what comes through that, because gin is what, juniper berries? Yeah. Well, this the, one has fragrance. Yeah. This one does not have a. It's got cucumber. That one's got cucumber in it. <laughs> you know, it's got an interesting floral note to it. Huh. And you 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 do get a little bit of that, you know, that juniper kind of pine smell, <laughs> but it mm-hmm. is definitely not a forward flavor in it. And it's uh, just really, uh, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but this so far exceeded my expectations. And I, I haven't done anything with gin yet. Well, I did Un Compagre for uh, Sean uh, in North Carolina because uh, he wanted that juniper berry flavor to a blend, so it remind him of hiking in Colorado. Um, but this, I think, this is going to be something special. And the, the two blends that I came up with: one is uh, an, an Oriental Forward English blend, and then one is an uh, Oriental Virginia Burley, uh, because I think the Oriental, you know, that incense flavor of the Orientals will really pair well with this gin. So let's see mm-hmm. what comes out of it. So all right, yeah, that'd be cool. So, other than that, um, I did make, uh, so we didn't talk about new blends, and I have a whole stack of them. You want to do it, or you want to save it for the next episode? Up to you. Uh, where are we at here? Yeah, we're about an hour at it? Yeah, about an hour. Hmm. Why don't we do it when we have Mike on? All right. We'll do it when we have All Mike right. on. All right. There we go. Well, actually, we have Jay on next week. We'll talk about him with Jay. Huh. All right, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because um, he's a, Jay's a, a blender in his own right, so that would yeah, well, be good. Yeah, and one of them, I actually, uh, I, I made another blend for Iron Mike or Titanium Mike. Um, um, that you know, he he said he wanted something a little stronger, so I made a cigar leaf blend for him, and it's called Ciudad uh, Antigua. Um. And I really, really like that one. Um, and I sent a sample of it to Jay, and I sent a sample of it to Mike. So we'll see what they have to say about it. So okay. Interesting. And regular. Go ahead. No, I'm I'm good. All right. Uh, in regularly scheduled notes, um, comments from the last couple episodes. Uh, super uh, Azalea Piper, super fun show, fellas. Mike was a great guest. Enjoyed the tobacco talk, and look forward to part two. So eventually we'll get Mike back on and we'll do part two. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mushroom leg. Mike is a magical gnome of information. The subtle hinting at his dad being the Zodiac killer was great. And basically, and to basically end it all on how blood red moon is a good blend was a little cherry on top. Great content here. Please don't tell me to enjoy my smokes. That's like saying, enjoy your pizza, big meat and salad shooter for life. All right. Got a fan. <laughs> got a, got fan. a fan. Yeah. Uh, Terry Brewster, as always, commenting on the show. What a friggin' excellent show. Mike, you rock. Your Viagra comment. I just spit my coffee out when he said that. Funny as hell, guys. All right. There you go. Yusuf Syed. And by the way, um, we're voting for the Pipe Week stuff going on. And, you know, most frequent commenter, best commenter. It, for me, it's yep. Yusuf. I absolutely oh, love yeah, the guy. For sure. Yep. Good Good morning. Awesome show. Was nice listening to Mike on the history of his podcast and experience. You guys' brain, your guys' brain is running on Max. Don't download too much. Enjoy your day and pour. Greetings from South <laughs> Africa. Don't download too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, Simple Georgian, Willie Lee. Awesome show. Oh, by the way, I made a new blend for Willie Lee called Old Confederate. Oh, it's, we're, we're going to wait to see what he has to say about it, but. Yeah, okay. Um, awesome show. Thanks for sharing with us. Really enjoyed getting to see Mike, the the highly talked about blend knowledgeable guy. Hopefully I'll get a chance soon to make it to the Vegas show and meet him. 
There you go. Good. Mike making friends all over the globe. And then last, Shane Wags commented on the Glentinsky episode. I primarily listen to the podcast, but it's fun to see your ugly faces once in a while. Well, thank you, Shane Wags. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I look at mine every morning, yeah. at least once. <laughs> yeah. Two gray It's birds. not pleasant. No, yeah. No. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> Love my naked Tinsky pipe and ESF blends. Tim, I'll be in touch. Thanks for the show, gents. So there you go. There you go. All right. You got anything new, Tim, you want to show off? Anything you want to talk about today? Oh, man. I got a bunch of stuff. Well, we got whip a, it out. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me while uh, I whip uh, this out. All right. Here's your pizza and here's your pepperoni. So I got to meet a... Ooh, another blowfish. Keep monkeying with this uh, blowfish shape. Very nice. Now, is that that... Uh... Uh, what's the adornment on the stummel? That's um, um, that's spalted birch, fossilized fossilized mammoth tusk. Ooh, ooh, yeah. and then I get a, a, a horn. Oh, look at that! Oh, here. look at that! I love and, uh, the shape of that. Yeah, and then, um. <laughs> One with some some agate on it. Oh, very nice. Danish ag. Looks yeah. like it's got a blast on it. Yeah, a little uh just having a blast. All right. And that looks right. bluish in color here on the screen. It is. It's uh it's it's uh navy over black. All when right. the navy comes through. Yeah. And then um Look at you've been got a busy another person. Ooh. Yeah, well, you know what I did was I I batched a bunch of pipes and um, and then this one here has got a uh, that uh, little novelty thing there, kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I batched a bunch of pipes and um, so you know made all the stumbles and then I spent a couple of days making stems. Mm -hmm. This one here's got some more blast. Yeah. I like the partially yeah. rusticated one. That was pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. And then uh, another blasted. Uh, oh, blasted! You know? There you go. I love the stuff on that one too. That like tortoise shell looking acrylic. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. It's kind of cool. And then a little little uh, thing that's um, solid black. Oh, very nice. It looks like there's a little red adornment on that. Or is that the this stem? has got a uh, that's the stem that's okay. uh yeah it's the stem black and white acrylic so yeah. so anyway there's um it's you know pipes for um the site and then trying to put some away for the show in august mm -hmm. yeah and then doing Excellent. commissions you know sending them all over the country you know yeah now you even got some wrong to addresses. Israel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's oh, right. By the way, in Adventures in UPS, so you and I both have a mutual friend, uh, Ilan, in Israel. Uh, his package made it to Azerbaijan on Saturday. Now, on a globe, they're not that far apart, but why wouldn't it go directly to Israel? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know how Azer yeah. Azerbaijan. More fits people in handling it because that's very <laughs> helpful. You want more yep. people picking it up and wonder what this is, shaking it, you know, drop it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the old yeah. Samsonite commercial with the uh, they they gave the uh, the suitcase to the ape in the cage. <laughs> the gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> You yep. know, as many flights as I've taken in my life, you know, you watch the luggage handlers handle your luggage. Oh, yeah. yeah They're not in love with it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at how far that one flew. I think, right. you know, like, and when you're sitting in, in the terminal and you're looking out at the, the, you know, the guy pulling the little train load of uh, uh, wagons behind him and their suitcases falling off onto the concrete, spinning, you know, mm -hmm. you got to go back and pick them up. They throw it back on the thing. It's like, yeah, I'm glad I put all that stemware in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. So, all right. Well, I um, uh, I talked to my uh, crack dealer, uh, Mitchell, at MBSD Pipes. And he said, I, I got all these K Woodies and Grey Bows and, you know, they need some work and, you know, you, you, you know, you know, pick some stuff out and I'll, I'll send it to you and, you know, I'm okay. And he cut me a deal on it. You know, and this is why I love the pipe community. So, because you know, you, every now and then you get some diamonds in the rough. So the first one that came out of the batch that I shined up today is this beautiful little BBB billiard. I really like the graining and color on hmm. it. It's it's sharp it's different polished it up today shined it up you know the stems are you know they come a little bit oxidized so you you take them out and clean the oxidation off of them and put a little you know a little carnauba on them to shine them up and life's good mm -hmm. and then here um uh, it's a k woody it's a little dublin absolutely love it oh, yeah. and it's surprising because the bowl is bigger than it looks so I, I really like that one that one came out very well um, I have a couple of Weber pipes and you had a Weber pipe in there, you know, and these are all just, you know, random, not particularly expensive pipes. And again, you don't have to have, uh, you know, a thousand dollar pipe to enjoy pipe smoking, you know, and, and I, I'm one that loves bringing something back, you know, that, that refinishing something, bringing it back right. so that it's usable. And this is a Dr. Grabo Starfire which is a, a kind of a pot-shaped pipe, and it's got the silver band and just cleaned up really, really well. It looks sharp, and, um, you know, just pipes to the collection. Yeah, and, very and then nice. Another K. Woody. This is a bent billiard. Uh, great bowl shape. I mean, this one was, it had a cake in it that I couldn't fit my little finger into the bowl. It was oh, no just, kidding. oh yeah, it, it was like a four millimeter cake all the way around the bowl. And I'm like, how did anybody, you know, this is somebody's pipe that they absolutely love because they smoked this thing a ton. And yeah. how do you, you know, how did you get tobacco into that? You know, so I reamed out the bowl, cleaned it out. And then the last one I'm going to show off, and I'm really kind of excited about this one because it came out spectacular. It's a yellow cool. bowl, a yellow bowl and yellow bowl. The, this whoever had this pipe smoked a single bowl out of it because you can still see the yellow inside the bowl, hmm. and that's why they were you know that was kind of the gimmick of what they did. So that looks like, a, like a, a little bit like a Savinelli except for the yellow stem. Yeah, it, a little it, bit. It almost has that that three twenty shape to it. You know the mm -hmm. Savinelli three twenty, which I, I yeah. think is an author or whatever they call it, but. It's it's a three twenty right. shape. So those are some of the pipes that I cleaned up. I've got a couple more to do, and we'll see where that goes. And yeah, you know, yeah. on to the next thing. So all right, yeah. Trying next, to think what else I can? Well, yeah, we got uh, we got Jay coming up. We got Jay coming on next week, um, and then uh we'll, we'll talk to jay Furman and we'll talk about new blends we'll talk about whatever pops into jay's head because that's mm -hmm. jay's just one of the the most gracious people absolutely love him to death very excited to have him on so episode 44 jay Furman, and maybe fun. we'll yeah. we'll invite mike on and have mike and jay and they can do oh that'd be fun yeah we, we might not get it a word 40. in edgewise but you know i know 44 we're gonna be coming up on a year pretty soon yeah. Tim's frozen. Yeah. You're whatever you were saying, uh didn't come through on my end. So yeah, so we're, we're gonna be coming uh, up episode on a year 43, pretty soon. We are what, nine weeks away? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well well we are. You know. And we were we'll nominated. Making a decision whether we're gonna whether we're gonna renew Ben's contract or not. Well, you know, I'm recording, doing all the recording tonight, so no telling what we're going to have. I know. Have. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to review his contract. Yeah. We're going to have to talk to him a little bit, so. Yeah. All right. Him up. Yeah. You know, you know, he's still wearing his, his hat of, you know, infinite celibacy, so. <laughs> all right. Well. Snappy Thank you for that kid. 
<laughs> we're going to buy him a light for his closet if we renew his contract because <laughs> he just cannot. He can't get dressed in Person the dark can't, anymore. Can't can't bear to look in there. <laughs> you know, I forgot. It's I too had much. This. It's too yeah. much grief all at one time. You know. Yeah. Person Nobody can't wears, survive. <laughs> Nobody wears purple velour anymore, Ben. So. <laughs> right. He's got to be probably wearing, you know, a pair of shoes like Ben Franklin, you know, with a buckle on them. <laughs> Hi, chicks. Heel. Chicks dig these. <laughs> yeah. 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 He played. He he sent me a uh, a video of himself playing at some. He said I got paid for it, but it was this. Uh, I, I I don't even know what the hell it was, but part of it was there was a, a bikini clad chick in a in a hula hoop spinning up by the ceiling, <laughs> and he was playing guitar. I was like, "Where the hell do you go at night, man?" <laughs> <laughs> when you yeah, look geez. back on your life, there are moments that you'll say, "Huh, regret." Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I got paid. Please to... tell me you washed your hands. <laughs> <laughs> don't sit on anything. Don't touch anything, and burn your. No, right, away. I know. Right, don't you know? Take a black light. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.